Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My son got married a month ago, and ever since then, tensions have been high with my wife and her parents. My wife and I married after the death of my first wife. Our son was six when she died, but our relationship had been over for a couple of years before she passed. We had stayed legally married for a while and tried to keep up pretenses for the sake of our son, but we both met people we wanted to be with, and then my first wife died. I continued to see my wife, the woman I had met and wanted to be with, but I did not introduce her to my son for another year, and I saw her far less for several months while I focused on my son and helping him through the loss of his mom. My son was seven when he met my wife, and I admit, my wife and I married quickly. He was a few weeks shy of eight years old, and he struggled with my wife being part of our lives. He was still in therapy, but we also did some group therapy together with a different therapist. He was respectful to her, but emotionally distant. He was not affectionate and did not love her. Over time, she did take on more parental responsibility, but we didn't jump straight into that. I didn't marry her to pawn my son off on someone else like some men do. I was always engaged in my son's life, and I always parented. He always turned to his grandmother, his mom's mom. He would call her regularly and would turn to her if I wasn't around, and he was upset about something. He would see her as often as he could. And eventually, per the advice of the therapist and after talking to my wife about how she was struggling doing all the parental things, but him being emotionally distant with her, I decided she should try to feel more of a friend, aunt kind of role, and not that of a parent. She wasn't okay with it at first, but then admitted it would wear on her if he never returned her love or saw her as a mom to him, and he was clear in therapy that he didn't want her as his second mom. He wanted nobody as that. Fast forward to the wedding and during the toasts, my son thanked me and my wife and his grandmother. And he mentioned his mom and how she was always his number one, but how after she died, his grandmother was the most important woman in his life until he met his wife. And now they both loved her. My wife became very upset upon hearing this. She told me she wanted to leave once the speeches were done. I told her I didn't want to leave my son's wedding. She asked how I could stay when he showed how much he doesn't really value her or her love. She left, I stayed, and she ended up at her parents' house. When I got home, she told me she felt abandoned, and her parents told me I was a bad husband, and I should have put my son in his place and told him only one living woman deserved to be declared the most important woman in his life, besides his wife, and that was my wife. They feel I should have left with her because the ceremony was over and it was just the reception. Am I the a-hole? OP is definitely not in the wrong here, but his wife is for sure. She isn't his mom, so she is not the most important woman in his life. And she is very selfish expecting OP to walk out of his son's wedding because she thinks everything needs to be about her. OP's son doesn't need putting in his place. It looks like he is very polite and generous enough to thank OP's wife during his speech. OP's wife needs to get over herself and realize that not everything is about her and that she owes OP and OP's son an apology. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Simply Lisa says, Not the a-hole. Sounds like you did things right with your son and his grief. Until the end, this was a beautiful story and you should be proud. I'm sure you know that your son turning to his grandma was normal. I think on some level you know your wife's reaction, and her parents, was not. I do sympathize with your wife that her dreams of being his mom didn't work out, but that was naive of her. I can understand her being hurt, but her behavior isn't okay. She took on the role of aunt or friend, which is appropriate, and she was treated as such at his wedding. I also applaud you for raising a son who spoke from the heart. Professional Drama says, You're the a-hole for not putting your wife in her place, which is being your wife. Your son made it clear since he was a kid that he didn't want a mom, but your wife was so delusional, she has the nerve of trying to ruin his wedding by trying to take his dad from there just because her ego was hurt. Curious14595 says, Not the a-hole. Your wife was thanked in his speech. He recognized her. She's had a couple of decades to understand and accept your son being closer to his grandmother. It's not how she hoped her step-parent relationship would work out, and I understand her disappointment. 
but there was no need to be dramatic about it and be especially hurt and make a statement by leaving, even a quiet one. Any advice you receive from people telling you to put your son in his place at his wedding because they feel he wrongfully ranked the top two living female relatives in his life, in his speech, should be summarily ignored for the incredibly poor, subjective judgments they are making. This was your son's wedding. Your wife was being very self-centered. The number one job of all wedding guests is to not create drama. Your wife failed. To start off, I'd like to be transparent that my boyfriends, we'll call him Liam, ex-wife, we'll call her Lauren, and I were not fond of each other. This is something she made an active effort to make clear, and I did not, but it is an easy assumption to make. We never officially met after Liam and I started dating, but were obviously aware of each other. They stayed friends after the divorce and had two kids together. A few years into our relationship, they had a falling out, nothing to do with me, and stopped talking. All that being said, Lauren passed away recently. Liam is of course having a hard time with it. She was the mother of two of his kids after all, and now his kids are obviously devastated. It's a lot of emotion to handle, and Liam and I are each other's main source of emotional support. When Liam told me about the wake, there was no question that he would be going to support his kids, and I asked him if he wanted me to go with him. He immediately said yes, and I thought nothing else of it. Of course I would be there for him and his kids if that's what he wanted. So the day comes. Everything was fine throughout the greetings and speeches, but shortly after the general mingling started, we hit a snag. I was standing off to the side of the room with my son. Liam was migrating from his kids to old in-laws and back to me for short breaks. When a woman I didn't know came up and asked me, you're Liam's new wife, right? Girlfriend, but yes. It's really inappropriate for you to be here, you know, she said. I was pretty taken aback. I didn't even meet him until almost 10 years after their divorce, and I wasn't the cause of the situation between them that led them to stop talking. All I could think to say was, wakes are for the living. Lauren was the mother of Liam's kids. He loved her enough to marry her and start a family with her. I'm sure some of those feelings never go away, and he's here to support his children. I'm here to support him. She gave me and my son this horrifically nasty look and said, you shouldn't be. Neither of you should be. She wouldn't want you here. This was a tense in the moment exchange, and my knee-jerk response bounced from my knee to my mouth before I could think, and I just said, well, sorry you feel that way, excuse me, and walked away towards Liam. We got a few more side glances during the time there, but the rest was uneventful, if also very uncomfortable. After we got home, I relaxed enough to actually think it through, and I really don't know if I should feel like the a-hole for going. Liam had a really tough time, and I know me being there helped him get through it. If anyone said anything to him, he hasn't told me. I get that woman's perspective. She's right in that Lauren probably wouldn't have wanted me there. But am I the a-hole for going anyway? Edit. To clarify some frequently asked questions regarding info that would not fit into the original post. His daughter did expect me to be there and told me to bring her brother. I was not an affair partner. I met Liam about a decade after the divorce. I was dressed very plainly, black button-down shirt and black slacks. Also, this was a wake, not a funeral. I use the word funeral for those who may not know what a wake is to get the point across. And finally, she was not hoping for any kind of reconciliation with him. She initiated the divorce. He spent years trying to get their family back together after the split, and she wasn't interested. Her fiancé was at the wake as well. Well, OP's response to this woman was very tactful and polite. I understand why OP went for Liam. But wakes and funerals are for the living. And since OP had a bad relationship with Lauren, I understand why her family wasn't thrilled to see her. OP's intentions may have been good, but in my opinion, it wasn't appropriate for OP to be there. Liam is an adult and can handle going to a wake for a few hours without having OP's support. I'm sure people felt like Liam was bringing a date to his ex's funeral. It was distracting and made things uncomfortable for everyone. And I truly can't understand why OP would bring her child along with her. I would really want to hear your opinion on this, guys, as the community is very divided in this case. Major Character 1725 says, Not the a-hole. Your decision to accompany your boyfriend to the funeral was a positively supportive action for him and his children during a difficult time. It's truly important. It shows the support and affection you have for his family. As for others, just ignore them. You handled the situation gracefully and respectfully. Turtle Scientific says, Everyone sucks here. The deceased didn't like you, 
and made it known. You admit she wouldn't have wanted you there. You made others there uncomfortable. You got multiple glances and generated drama. You're not even married to Liam. Liam, the ex the deceased wasn't even on speaking terms with, who thought it appropriate to bring his girlfriend to his ex-wife's and mother of his children's wake or funeral. You say you just wanted to be there for him, but come on, you had to know how this would look. You didn't say how old the kids are, but you do mention you didn't start seeing him until 10 years after the divorce. So these are at least teens or adults. He has them for comfort and vice versa. You were just unnecessary added drama. Any Revolution 3633 says, Reading your post, I just realized I will have to give clear instructions that if anything happens to me, I am banning my ex and his girlfriend from my funeral. I can't stand him or her, also never met her, and I know he is thick-skinned enough to pull something like this. I am 48 female and was married to my ex, Jim, 49, for 20 years. We have three kids, 22 female, 20 male, 18 male, and have been divorced for five years. Both of us are now married, but we maintain a good relationship for our kids and because we do like each other. We divorced because Jim was a bad husband and not a great dad when we were together. Jim worked long hours to build a wonderful career while I had to neglect my career to be there for our children. He didn't truly understand it until it was too late. He provided for us and still does provide for our kids. I am grateful for everything he did, but admit that I resented him during our marriage because I had to watch his career take off while mine, same career, stalled. For a little more context, I married a mutual friend, David, 50, of Jim and me. We were both divorced, no cheating was involved, and my ex has never had an issue with it because he knows that we didn't cheat. We both had a conversation with him at the start of the relationship, and he was actually happy for us. Four years ago, Jim met Kara, 34, and they got married two years. It's her first marriage, and they had their first baby last year. As I mentioned, Jim and I have a great relationship that includes monthly dinner with our children and just us. We've been doing this since we separated six years ago, so our children understand that we are still a family, and it allows our kids an opportunity to share things with their parents and siblings without anyone else. The issue came up on Easter, and I'm not sure if I'm the a-hole or justified. We were all at former mother-in-law's house for the holiday, and Kara was going on and on about what a wonderful husband and father Jim is to her and their daughter. I don't care because I know my ex has more time now than he did when our children were younger. I didn't really say anything until Kara looked directly at me and asked in front of the entire family why I ever gave Jim up. She also made a comment about me being too busy falling in love with my husband's best friend. I simply looked back at her and said, You know, Kara, he wasn't always a great husband and is truly so wonderful now because I was willing to make a ton of sacrifices so he could have a successful career. But don't worry, you are very welcome for that. Almost everyone laughed, including Jim. But Kara was pissed and texted me later that night to tell me how hurt she was that I insulted her and her husband at Easter dinner and said I shouldn't even have been there. I ignored her text at first, but she called the next day to continue the conversation. The conversation eventually turned to me explaining that my marriage to Jim and her marriage are very different. And while I am happy that they are happy and have a great life, she doesn't get to rewrite history or comment on the type of husband Jim was to me. I reminded her that Jim and I have spent many years working through our crap, and while she may think she is funny, she just comes off as insecure. So am I the a-hole? Well, in my opinion, OP's reply was kind and truthful, whereas she started the whole thing with blaming OP for the marriage ending while also insinuating cheating had occurred. If it was a sensitive subject for her, then she shouldn't joke about it. It most definitely is a delicate matter. Deleted user says, Not the a-hole. It was pretty audacious of her to assume the demise of your relationship with your ex was entirely on your shoulders, not to mention very insulting to accuse you of cheating. She needs to grow up and take responsibility of her words, especially as a mom. Deleted user says, Not the a-hole. She can dish it out, but not take it. This was absolutely none of her business. She had no right to make this comment at that dinner, nor to follow up with you with a text or a call. She is 34 going on 12. Yes, she is insecure. Cindy201 says, You are not the a-hole. She baited you in front of everyone with the comment, and you replied with the truth. She is insecure because you have moved on and still want to have a good shared experiences with family. Edited to add, 
It was really shocking how many people seemed to comment on my resentment towards my ex-husband and how I didn't seem to understand the sacrifices he made for our family. I wonder how many people would have felt that way had the situation been reversed and my ex was the one full of resentment. Either way, I'm happy I posted because I called Jim today and we talked about her crappy comment. He shared with me a little bit and I also told him about this post which he has read. Some comments that he asked me to include are that he laughed at my comment because it was completely true and said that the money he spent on therapy to figure that out was well worth it. He also said that even though his wife is younger, he thinks that her perception has more to do with the fact that this is her first marriage and it can be hard for her to relate. He did tell me that they spoke about it that night and he basically said the same thing that I said the next day and that she sort of understood. But again, it is difficult for her because she wasn't there for it and he thinks she is a little insecure about how good of a relationship he and I have now. He did tell her that we worked really hard on that relationship and it took many fights, therapy, and years to get to that place. It was a really good conversation and a good reminder that all relationships need work. When we got divorced, neither one of us saw it as an end to our family, but just a new chapter. He said he would continue to stress the fact that Kara is an extension of our family and not a new member.